Hey there, and welcome to today's edition of 10 TV Plus. I'm Dylan Robichaud alongside Michael Barons. Michael, today officially was the coldest morning that we've had. <laughs> I mean, it has just been morning after morning in this bitter cold air across central Ohio, and a lot of impact days to go along with it, too. Exactly. So we want to start off here this morning talking about the observed temperatures here because they were quite astounding throughout the area. In Columbus, this was officially our coldest morning that we've had so far this winter. What was number two? yesterday morning on uh, Tuesday morning we woke up temperatures were around negative two today negative three so just barely by a whisker today it was slightly colder but as we head off down towards a uh, chill coffee and uh, ooh, look at Springfield negative 10 out there so for everyone on this map it was your coldest and then look at Cambridge negative 14 that is not the wind chill that is the observed temperature this morning wow that is astounding and as we look at the wind chill going into this afternoon, some of you guys are still negative 15, negative 20. As we head towards the afternoon hours, you'll notice that we finally start climbing up. This morning, it was negative 10 to negative 15. But this afternoon, when you're watching this, it's just barely above zero in the single digits. So the cold, unfortunately, is not going anywhere today, but it does turn a little bit milder later on this week, which we'll talk about more in just a moment. Overnight tonight, nighttime lows, 12 degrees in Columbus. Hey, we'll take it, right? That's 15 degrees warmer than what we felt this morning. So we'll take any kind of progress that we can get. Notice that everybody stays above zero tonight, so that is great news. Now, as we look right here, bam, there's that polar vortex. We are looking at that Arctic blast, but the cold Arctic air gets out of here by Wednesday and Thursday, and then we have no more of that cold air behind it. And in fact, things actually turn a lot warmer as we head into this weekend and next week. So when we stand here and we say that we're not looking at the risk of any more Arctic outbreaks, what does that mean? Well, we're not looking at any significant cold weather through the start of February. Below normal for New England, above normal across the Mississippi Valley. But as we head into central Ohio, we're looking at near normal temperatures. Rainfall outlook, again, not a whole lot really sticking out here above average rainfall down to the south, but across the Ohio Valley, not really a whole lot shaking. As we head towards the next 10 days, though, look at the temperature here. So this horizontal line is a is, uh, normal. That yellow line is the observed temperature. So this weekend, most of next week, we are actually sitting right about normal, and then we start climbing above normal as we head into the later half of next week. So that would be like days seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that is good. So if you don't like the cold air, this is good news for you that we are gonna be tracking some progress there. Here's the interesting thing though, all right? Today, January 22nd, if the month of January were to end right now, this would go down as the 11th coldest in recorded history, okay? Obviously, 1970s, 1980s, and 1940s, we had a lot of very cold Januaries. Typically, this time of the month is the coldest time of the year. And in fact, over the 12 month calendar year, normally right around January 20th, that third week of January is typically the coldest time of the year. This year, no shock, okay? This week, we definitely had our coldest air out there of the season. Not a whole lot showing up on the satellite and radar map. The clouds though will be building in as we head into the afternoon hours though. You can see over the last 12 hours, finally down to the south though, where we saw that historic snowstorm late last night going into this morning, conditions are improving across South Florida. And I never thought that I would stand right here and tell you this, but down in Florida, their biggest snowstorm was bigger than our biggest snowstorm in Columbus. Our largest snow that we had was January 5th and 6th. You remember that a couple of weeks ago, 4.4 inches. Pensacola had seven and a half inches, okay? between yesterday and today, so astounding. It's like, what world are we living in? This is just kind of crazy how that is uh, shaking out. Now, so far this winter, we've had 12.2 inches. The irony here is that the last three winters have really been neck and neck, around 12, 13 inches. The last significant snow that we had was back during the pandemic year, 2020, 2021. We had about 28 inches of snow back then. So four out of the five last winters have been uh, lower snowfall than normal here across our region. Now, as we look outside today, you can see that the clouds are going to be increasing as we head into the afternoon. 
uh, on Thursday. Again, this is tomorrow. Looking at that risk of a couple of snow showers developing, there could be a light accumulation. It would be similar to what we had on Sunday night where snows for a half hour to an hour, you get a light dusting. That's pretty much it. And then the snow will clear out of here as we head towards late Thursday night. But I just want you to be full on prepared for that. Seven day forecast shows no major st uh, storms anytime soon. On day six, we did have a storm in the forecast, but now all the computer models are taking it much further down to the south, which means that as we head towards next Monday and Tuesday, we are looking dry. With that being said, if the track of that low goes a little bit further north, we might be adding precipitation back into the forecast. Just want to let you know that something could be up as we head into the start of next week. Seven day forecast shows that we are back up to the middle end of the 30s, heading into Monday and Tuesday, tracking some clouds. Other than that, we're not really looking at any major storms anytime soon. And I say that while knocking on wood because <laughs> uh, it's been busy this winter between the cold and multiple snowstorms. Yeah, I mean, it's been definitely a winter that's been falling in line of our forecast. We were thinking a little bit colder than average. We were thinking a little bit snowier than average. Yeah, we'll still have some work to do to make the snowy, but we were certainly clocking January into that colder than average category. It, exactly. And, you know, it's interesting is that, you know, it, as we look down to the south, places like Florida, mm -hmm. you know, Pensacola had a bigger snowstorm than we've had here. Which, which is wild. Which is wild if you think about it here. So I know there's been a lot of chitter chatter about that kind of stuff on social media and you got some uh, stuff to uh, talk more about with that, right? Yes, well, we'll, we'll talk, show you more about Pensacola here coming up in just a little bit. But first we wanna talk a little bit about some of the stuff uh, you guys in Ohio can do to deal with more of this cold as it's yeah. still impacting us, even though we're not bitterly cold anymore. Experts say now is the time to check on the essential areas of your vehicle. To NTV's Tara Jabor spoke with a crew at a local auto shop about what you need to check before hitting the road. If you're headed out in the cold weather, make sure to check a few things in your car before leaving. It'd be bad news real quick if it's not correct. Luke's Auto says it's been a busy week with car problems related to the cold weather. Uh, a lot of no starts and battery issues, noise complaints, wipers not working, no heat. Luke Walker, owner of Luke's Auto, says the cold weather can almost make anything on the verge of breaking break. Get your battery looked at, make sure that it's not testing weak, get the, uh, the coolant in your car checked if, if it's not uh, strong enough, uh, you can actually have it freeze. Make sure you defrost the car in the morning. Uh, don't want to turn the wiper blades on until the car is completely defrosted. If you own an electric vehicle, make sure to charge it more often. A lot of the EV customers we have also notice a reduction in how far they can get before they have to charge your car. And once the cold weather leaves, they recommend washing your car to prevent rust. All the stuff that gets sprayed on the road is highly corrosive. And with us living in Ohio, we see a lot of rusty cars which could help out just rinse them off and through the car wash. And Luke's Auto says there are a couple things you can keep in your car like this emergency safety kit and a brush just in case you're in an emergency, then you're prepared for it. Reporting in Columbus, Tara Jabor, 10TV News. And talking of those emergency kits, here's again a list of some things you'll want to keep in your car, including that brush or a snow scraper. Uh, a bag of sand or cat litter can help your tires get traction on ice if you get stuck. Also, again, in that emergency kit, make sure you pack it with blankets, some first aid materials, jumper cables, a phone charger. You can search emergency kit on 10tv.com for a full list of recommended items. And continuing with the cold, as we were talking about earlier, it's impacting all across the region and not just your cars, but your houses as well. You need to make sure you stay safe heating them in this intense freeze. If you have bathrooms, kitchens next to an exterior wall, here's what you can do right now to prevent those pipes from freezing. You can buy wrap uh, to put around those pipes at any hardware store uh, that helps uh, for the pipes that are in a kitchen or bathroom sink, something like that along an outside wall. Just leave that the door to that room open. Uh, if it's a kitchen sink area, leave the, the doors underneath the kitchen sink open so that heat gets into that compartment space. And if your pipe is frozen, Marshall Reardon says never use a blowtorch. If your water comes out in a trickle, it means a good chance that pipe is again frozen up. The Red Cross says shut off your water and find the area where the pipe is frozen. You can then thaw it out with a heating pad, hair dryer, or a space heater. Keep the faucets open. Letting that running water out will help melt away the ice. 
And continuing with the cold, starting today, the Columbus Parks and Recreation Department will be opening five community centers as warming shelters. The five locations are listed on your screen. This is, of course, the third straight day those centers are being offered for warming. They'll be open from 9 this morning until 9 tonight. And as we were talking about earlier, Dylan, uh, you were saying the snow in the south, bigger than the snow we had up here. <laughs> yeah, by, by a lot. And what was it? We were saying earlier, Pensacola, their biggest snowstorm before this was three inches in yeah. 1895. I mean, it's just wild. It, it wasn't even just Florida. I mean, it was states all across the south that were seeing a big blast of winter weather. They're calling it a once in a generation storm <laughs> in the far south. I mean, look at that. Look at the delight there. <laughs> First snowflakes. Um, firefighters out there enjoying it too. People have never seen snow in their life in some of these Gulf states and southeastern portions of the U.S. Louisiana had a first ever blizzard warning in the history books, believe that or not. After yesterday, Florida again setting those snowfall records. Of course, snow falling in parts of Georgia, Texas, Mississippi, and Alabama as well. Naomi from CBS has seen some of those blizzard conditions and reports on the latest of this winter storm affecting millions of Americans. From Texas to North Florida, scenes of snow are surprising about 40 million Americans. It's beautiful. Yeah. There's just no words yeah. to describe it. Snow on the beach, who would have thought? In Gulf Shores, Alabama, snowy beach fronts were a first for those who came out just to witness it all. While students at the University of Southern Alabama went sledding. As parts of more than 30 states are in the path of the frigid front, New Orleans is experiencing its biggest snowfall on record. This is unreal. We're loving the, the amount of snow and it's just fun to be out here. But while some make memories, emergency officials are sharing warnings of slick roads and black ice, hazardous for drivers who aren't used to these conditions. The next 24 hours are our most dangerous. At least four people have died in the storm, two from the cold in Austin, Texas, and two others in Alabama. In northern Florida, a state of emergency declared with many businesses and schools closed. It's snowing in Florida, and I want my children to be able to tell their children and their grandchildren that they were able to experience this in Florida. Parts of the panhandle saw half a foot of snow, shattering longstanding records, with one meteorologist proclaiming the storm will go down in the history books as the Gulf blizzard of 2025. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. And check this out, some video of the LSU mascot, Mike the Tiger, out playing in the snow in his enclosure at that college campus. That is not something you'd ever think you'd see <laughs> <laughs> down in the south. I know this tiger, he's sitting there like, what, what even is this? What am I dealing with right now? <laughs> that's crazy. That's video. just incredible. Yeah. And, and speaking of some more of that uh, incredible imagery, I want to show you these pictures here. This is actually my cousin, Andrea. She grew up in central Indiana, so she's used to this. But she lives in Pensacola, Florida now. And she's like, I moved down here yeah. for a reason. Oh, she married a Floridian? She was ready to go. I don't know about him, but I mean, look at these photos. You're, you're talking about shattering those records. This looks like scenes straight out of central Ohio from a couple weeks ago. But I mean, again, Florida, Pensacola, Florida, where we're seeing these pictures come out of, I'm sure that water is a downright reasonable even. I mean, it's probably like 40, 50 degree. I'm like, do they even there. have a uh, heating, like, ways to like heat their homes like we have up here i mean i mean you got some heat down there i mean they, they turn it on in florida for it <laughs> way way yeah. cool, uh, warmer than we would up here but again just amazing uh pictures coming out of that snow down in florida Jeez. yeah and wow <laughs> i mean never thought you'd see that this was uh one of our more interesting weather shows too and not just this um california dealing with the fires stuff like that they they've yeah. been worse this week yeah, absolutely. I mean, they were still battling those fires, doing the best that they can. And unfortunately, now something that you might think would be a bit of a blessing is going to turn out to be a curse. That's because public works crews, they're racing against rain this weekend, and that brings its own set of problems. KCAL news reporter Jeff Gwen at the Pacific Palisades have a look at what they're doing to prepare for this rain. As night falls again on the burn scars of the Palisades fire, 
Caitlin Kuchma is racing against time, clearing out her Pacific Palisades home with rain in the forecast for this weekend. The number one reason why we're so urgent today is because of the rain. Her home didn't burn, but she's concerned about the hillsides around her giving way, like what we saw at this home that survived the flames last week. On Tuesday, LA Mayor Karen Bass met with first responders and crews who are clearing away debris. She issued an executive order to protect the water supply and prevent fire contaminated runoff from flowing into the ocean. This firestorm left behind serious health and environmental impacts. Crews have been installing barriers to shore up hillsides and roads. Burn scars don't absorb water at a normal rate. They simply add to the risk of floods, landslides, and debris flow. DWP workers have been going nonstop trying to remove and repair damaged power lines and poles. Here's the deepest reaches. Mitt Seeley was able to get back into his home briefly to grab his surfboards that survived the flames that destroyed his apartment complex right across the street from a fire station. Having these back is just like one step closer to recovery, I guess. But for Caitlin Kuchma, there's been frustration with the long process to get back into her home to start rebuilding her life, which city leaders say is tied to the cleanup process. They're just leaving us in limbo, and limbo is so much worse because it, 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 it inhibits our ability to make decisions on where we're going. Do I go out of state to stay with family, which is cheaper for me, or do I spend more money on a hotel because in a few days it's going to open up? And finally today, let's check out some video into us here at 10TV. One Buckeye fan did not let the snow or the cold stop them from celebrating. In Northern Ohio, the owner came home and created a display to celebrate Ohio State's championship. Post the pictures on Facebook and they're stating that letters are about six feet tall. And that it took about six hours to build that. And then it won't be melting anytime <laughs> soon with uh, how cold it is this week. Yeah, not at all. OH. IO. There you go. <laughs> Wait, does he have the IO or does he just have the OH? I think he just has the OH. Oh, I didn't man. see the IO. <laughs> Maybe the IO is on the other side of the house. Possibly. And, you know, speaking of all the celebrations this week, take a look at this too. Wexner Medical Center giving each baby born in its hospital a gift to remember a special swaddle. It says the month, our swaddle for this month it says born a champion. Gift for families that is irreplaceable as a memory of that game. You I know, love those little babies out there. I love the culture around that around here. Mm -hmm. People are people are and you know that baby is going to be a Buckeyes fan for life. You know that. Absolutely. I mean, what better gift? Um, you're, you're born in a very cold month, a month with uh, some Buckeye news to celebrate. You're going to keep that for the rest of your life, I'm sure. Yep. Wow. Absolutely. Just incredible. Yeah. Okay. Well, that does it it for us here on uh, 10 TV Plus. Jerry Martz will have your forecast tonight on 10 TV News starting at six.